falls in love with her, or has he got another ultra emotion? I think Malcolm Malcolm has a very difficult time in showing love. But what Malcolm has learned over the course of time, let's just go back when he lost um, his wife very early on, and then he was surviving to provide for his son. But we, but deep on down, knowing that he knew that Thea was his daughter, he then lost his son. Why? Because he. Malcolm can control people with money, power, and also with his um, destructive techniques. What he hasn't been able to do because he lost Tommy that way was he, Tommy got emotionally involved with the girl. Love destroyed him. He also lost Moira that way. She sacrificed herself for love, right? He is, has only left. He's got Thea left. He's got to control her by controlling her emotion so that's the way he's going to look at it now because and that's going to be so he will love her but in a very different way will that be through perhaps training her in his art? I am not saying anything <laughs> but in order to control someone emotionally you have to break them down well has Malcolm abandoned his nefarious kind of evil doings or has he got things still going on Malcolm's not evil <laughs> I say as I twist my ring like, a, <laughs> like an evil <laughs> an evil doer yeah a psychopath um, I think Malcolm's un misunderstood I mean let me be let me be, I'm talking as Malcolm Merlin here right you think if you think I'm bad let's go back and look at everything that Oliver has done okay so we're both just doing the same thing but going about it in very different ways and one is deemed a hero and the other one is not in my book, that's wrong, okay? Because I, I, as Malcolm, see myself as being the hero. But, God damn it, no one is recognizing that. <laughs> What's your take on these amazing female characters that are on the show? I mean, obviously, you've worked in the past with great female characters as well, in Doctor Who and Torchwood. Um, but, you know, we have these characters that do kick ass, but then we also have ones that are emotionally strong. I, well, that's what, I, that's what I think is great about this, this show. Um, and I come from a show also where we never judge people on their, uh, let me just, uh, when I say sexuality, I don't mean, a, you know, gay, gay or straight, I mean uh, they're, they're s being a male or a female, gender. right? Their gender. We don't do gender judging. And this is the same thing because there's some kick-ass females, you know what? And there, there's some emotional females, there's some kick-ass males, and there's some emotional males. Everybody's got a bit of it. And, uh, you know, Tommy wasn't kick-ass, but he was emotional. So we're, we're, we're kind of covering the whole spectrum, and everybody is equal. And how great that finally we have a show on television that young girls can look at and go, yeah, I can be kick-ass. I, I can be a hero. Because look, that, you know, that, that girl, that woman, is a hero also. So I don't have to be afraid of, you know, dare I say, being, wanting to be jock-esque. Does that, make, does that make sense? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a great thing to have. So working with all these girls and ladies and uh, women um, is amazing. It's, it's interesting for me also because I'm at a point in my life now where I'm not going to be the kind of, you know, the, I have been the, the, the hero and the younger character. I'm now the dad. Which is really great because I get to kind of relax a little bit. I get to go home at night and have that two glasses of wine. I was going to say one, but that would be a lie. <laughs> you know, because I'm not going to be the one taking my shirt off. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Although I still could. Right, right. But I, I don't have to worry about that anymore. You know what I mean? Andrew also brought out the fact that Malcolm Merlin's now kind of the only father figure left in Oliver's life. How is that family relationship going to Well, go? that's what, the, if you go back again, the, the, the day that, uh, after that fight sequence, the day that Malcolm Merlin, Malcolm found out that Oliver was, you know, the hood, the arrow, when he pulled that, the hood off him, and it was the reaction, I want it again, because, oh my God, if you even go back further, when I, it was Tommy's birthday, and I walked in with a birthday present for Tommy, and he didn't want it, who did I throw it to and wink? Ollie. Because I, again, as Malcolm Merlin, this sounds so weird to talk as him, mm -hmm. I, I see Oliver as just as much a son as uh, I did with Tommy, but I, I, Oliver is the son that I always wanted Tommy to be. The playboy, the guy out there doing things and, you know, making it happen. And when I found out that he was, you know, the green, you know, he was Arrow, I completely didn't, didn't want to kill him. Couldn't, you know, although I fought viciously with him. That's why maybe I, you know, faked my death. So I didn't have to kill him. 
beat the crap out of me. <laughs> he totally beat the crap out of me, but do you think I may have let him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you talked about uh, controlling love with the end like that, and uh, everyone in the show seems to be finding a relationship of some sort. What about Malcolm? I if hope he does, so. Yeah. I hope so, but who, uh, you know, again, who do we... Who, What's great is, again, we as the actors don't know what's to come at some point. So who knows who's going to come in? Um, I've, I have fished through my DC encyclopedia <laughs> nice. at the, you know, that I keep by my bed so just to great. see who I might so want to fall in love with. <laughs> so great. Any, any ideas? Isn't that of course I do, but I'm not telling you right now. <laughs> Power girl. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's that kind of thing, you know, and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan. I'm a big geek and a big fan myself. I love this. I love the fact that I've been a time traveler. I'm a, I've been a time agent. I've been a hero. Now I'm being a villain on a freaking comic book you know, that I, that I grew up reading, you know, and now the fact, in fact, my goal, one of the things I would love to do for those, I mean, most, most of you either know me f- from the other TV stuff that I've been, but I don't know if you know, my sister and I write together. Yeah, yeah, the book, yeah. Exactly. And yeah, yeah. <coughs> we have a book series and we've done a couple of comic books and I've actually mentioned to Andrew that I would love my sister and I, if we could do a branch off of the comic for Merlin and do a, a series to look into either his past Great, yeah. or what, the, you know, some, like an offshoot mm-hmm. of what's happening. I think it would be, sorry, I'm allergy choking, <laughs> but I think that would be great because I love the genre. I think it's amazing and I love the show. Great. As I'm about to choke. The Merlin Chronicles. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, thank you again so much. The Manipulator. The Puppeteer. <laughs> what do you think about the explosion right now of all of these DC shows now making it to the screen? <coughs> well, it's funny, because you, if you go back into the, into the, thank you, into the 70s, the 70s and 80s when I was younger, I used to play with all of the DC Mego Hmm. figures yeah and I still have all of them and in fact over the years I've bought all the rest I have a a trunk full of them (coughs) so for me DC was always prominent and then there was the you know I've and I've had the fortunate thing of meeting Stan Lee and knowing him and I I I like Marvel also do you know what I mean you can't I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me (laughs) but you can like both okay I'm out (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's all right um uh well in my world it's both anyway uh both <laughs> you got it um the the but for for dc i think you know there has been that marvel resurgence now it's dc's turn yeah and what a what a great it's that it's on you know warner brothers and cw are taking you know uh, a lead in that and they're going to be you know flash i mean if you're, any of you are able, or you see my panel today, I'm, I've got my fl- I'm, my flash t. I've got something planned with my flash oh, T-shirt. Nice. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, but it's I love the fact that these characters are coming back, and you know the fact that they're they're revamping it, redoing it, and it's it's just awesome. It's just let's bring the movies next. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. let's bring the movies. Just, just spoiled that you might be actually appearing on the flash. <laughs> Well, there, we have been told that, and Andrew said it yesterday, that there will be crossovers because, um, uh, is it, cent- there's Starling City, is it Central City? Central City. Central City, yeah. Central City um, that there will be some uh, crossing over. I hope, I would love Malcolm Merlin to cross over into uh, The Flash. That would be wicked. You're putting a little darkness to the... That world. Well, yeah, because like the world. But what's great is to have two complete. The cities are far apart, are not that far apart. But to have two different worlds that are created in that DC <laughs> same planet, if that makes sense, yeah. or same. Yeah. So yeah, it would be it would be interesting. I don't know if it'll happen, but it would be great because that was like Andrew said it yesterday. Growing up, when we were watching things like the Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman, and then you had Oscar Goldman, who would be the one that would go back and forth. It was it was. It made it. It made those shows. It made it more real. Made those worlds more real to us because we we believed that they actually existed. And you know, Starling City does exist. I hate to tell you, <laughs> <laughs> I live in it. Uh, let's get some food in you quickly. You've okay. got about fifteen minutes yeah. before you're 